Welcome to the Book of Saints podcast, brought to you by St. John Chrysostom, Coptic Orthodox Church of Laguna Niguel, California. St. Augustine was born in 354 AD in Tagasti, a small town near Hippo in what is now Algeria. His father, Patricius, was a pagan and of a violent disposition. But through the example and prudent conduct of his wife, St. Montica, Patricius was baptized before his death. As a child, Augustine's mother instructed him in the Christian religion and taught him how to pray. Falling dangerously ill, he desired to be baptized, and his mother got everything ready for it to happen. Suddenly, though, he grew better, and the baptism was put off. Augustine's father wanted him to become a man of learning, and cared very little about his character. He went to Carthage in 370 AD when he was only 17 to study rhetoric with eagerness and pleasure. But his motives were driven by vanity and ambition, and he enjoyed loose living way too much. In Carthage, he had a relationship with a woman to whom he remained faithful until he sent her away 15 years later. She bore him a son, Adiodatus, in the year 372. He switched his studies to philosophy and the search for truth and studied the scriptures, but from a subjective angle. He was offended with their simplicity and could not relish their humanity or penetrate the spirit of their meaning. He became seduced by Manichaeism, a combination of paganism and philosophy. I sought with pride, he confessed, what only humanity could make me find. Fool that I was, I left the nest, imagining myself able to fly, and I fell to the ground. For nine years he had his own schools of rhetoric and grammar in Tagaste and Carthage, while his devoted mother, St. Monica, spurred on by the assurance of a holy bishop that the son of so many tears could not perish. She never ceased by prayer and gentle persuasion to try and bring him to conversion and reform. In 383, he secretly departed to Rome, lest his mother should prevent him from going to the big city. There he opened a school for rhetoric and then was appointed by the government as a teacher in Milan, where his mother and his friend Alypius joined him. It was in Milan where St. Augustine came under the influence of St. Ambrose the bishop. He began to go to his sermons, not to profit, but to gratify his curiosity and to enjoy the eloquence. Eventually, though, he found the sermons of St. Ambrose to be more meaningful than his adopted heresy. He began to read the New Testament, especially the writings of St. Paul. In the same time, the mother of his son went back to Africa, leaving the child behind. St. Augustine's spiritual, moral, and intellectual struggle, though, went on. He was convinced of the truth of Christianity, but his will was weaker than the world temptations around him. Thus he delayed his return to Christ for many months. Soon, St. Augustine would say to himself, in a little while, I shall make up my mind, but not right now. In his half-desires of conversion, he was accustomed to beg of God the grace of chastity, but in some measure afraid of being heard too soon. He realized that his problem was a moral one. The divine truth for which he was seeking would never be his, unless he first overcame his own weakness. Soon after, Pontitian, an African, came to visit St. Augustine and his friend Alypius. He told them about two men who had been suddenly turned to the service of God by reading about the life of St. Anthony. His words had a powerful influence on the mind of St. Augustine. What are we doing, Augustine asked of Olympias, to let the unlearned seize heaven by force, whilst we, with all our knowledge, remain behind, cowardly and heartless, wallowing in our sins? Because they have outstripped us and gone before, are we ashamed to follow them? Is it not more shameful to not follow? He rushed to the garden with tears in his eyes, threw himself on the grass under a fig tree, and reproached himself bitterly crying out, O Lord, how long? Will it be tomorrow? Why not now? Why not put an end to the shame this very hour? 
As he spoke these words, he heard a child's voice singing in the background. Toli lege, toli lege, which translates, take up and read, take up and read. He remembered that St. Anthony was converted from the world by hearing a single verse. He took up St. Paul's epistles and read the first chapter that met his eyes. Let us walk properly, as in the day, not in reverie or drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Romans 13, 13 through 14. When he told Olypius what he had experienced, he took the book and read. He found the next words to be, Receiving one who is weak in the faith, chapter 14, verse 1, and applied it to himself and joined his friend in his resolution. The high point in the conversion of St. Augustine took place in September of 386, when he was 32 years old. He, his son Ariodatus, and Olympias were baptized by St. Ambrose on Easter the following year in the presence of their mother, St. Monica. Knowing her prayers had been answered, she gave up her spirit shortly thereafter. St. Augustine prayed, Too late have I loved thee, O beauty so ancient and so new, too late have I loved thee. Thou wast with me, and I was not with thee. I was abroad, running after those beauties which thou hast made, those things which could have no being, but in thy kept me away from thee. Thou hast called, thou hast cried out, and hast pierced my deafness. Thou hast enlightened, thou hast shone forth, and my blindness is dispelled. I have tasted thee, and am hungry of thee. Thou hast touched me, and I am a fire with the desire of thy embraces. From that time forward, St. Augustine went back to Tagasti, his native city, where he lived for three years with his friends and shared a life of prayer, study, and poverty. All things were common and distributed according to everyone's needs. In 391, they ordained him as an assistant to Valerius, bishop of Hippo, and he had to move to that city. He established a monastery in his house, living with saints Olypius, Evodius, and Bosidius, and others according to the rule of the Holy Apostles. St. Valerius, who had a speech impediment, appointed St. Augustine to preach in his presence, and he has not interrupted the course of his sermons until his death, nearly 400 sermons. He eventually succeeded St. Valerius as the Bishop of Hippo and founded a community of religious women, and his sister became the first abbess. He used the revenues of his church in relieving the poor and redeeming the captives. Like another Moses or St. Paul, he said to his people, I do not want to be saved without you. What shall I desire? What shall I say? Why am I a bishop? Why am I in the world? Only to live in Jesus Christ, but to live in him with you. This is my passion, my honor, my glory, my joy, and my riches. Though his 35 years as a bishop of Hippo, St. Augustine had to defend the faith against many heresies. He opposed the Donatists, the Pelagians, and the Ellerians. St. Augustine calmly resigned his spirit into the hands of God on August 28, 430 AD, after having lived 76 years and spent almost 40 of them in the labors of the ministry. Among his great works is the 15-volume on the City of God, which took him 30 years to write, and his confessions. The life and conversion of St. Augustine is an example of how the prayers of one can save another, as is the case with St. Monica praying incessantly, not just for St. Augustine, but also for her undevout husband, whom she managed to have baptized before he died. God is never done with us, and to our dying breath, do the gates of heaven remain open to those who call? But what can we take away from this story and apply to our daily life? Perhaps in this, and I paraphrase St. Matthew the Poor from his book, Orthodox Prayer Life, 
we do not know at what stage God is working with others. Perhaps this person is on their way up and will encounter a great fall, while others have fallen and God is picking them back up. We have a tendency to judge by our one-dimensional perception of others without seeing the multiple-dimensional support God has for all. Never give up on praying for others, but equally, never give up on being honest with yourself and judging your own actions so that you may learn and grow more in Christ. Lord, help us to pray for others that they may taste the sweet joy of your presence in their life and forgive us our many faults that we may know them, learn from them, and be stronger in you. May the prayers and supplications of St. Augustine be with us all. Amen.